Hey, Coach, thanks for joining me again on this Simple Coach to Coach interview so we can talk about what's coming up in, what, like a day or two? Like, it's just crazy. Um, but do appreciate you taking the time and, and joining me today. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, obviously, love love the show. And uh, honestly, I can't tell you how many of these I watch, so excited to be back on. You, you, do you have a bigger problem as I do? Do you need a therapist? I'm trying to find <laughs> a soccer-specific therapist for this Pro- Probably, probably. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really during the fall. Like, the fall gets really ugly for me because I just – I watch, I watch so many games. It's just yeah. not healthy. I gotta believe it's not healthy. Like there's gotta, there's something. Meds, I don't know. Right between uh, Division One, Two, II, and Three, and, and EPL stuff, right? That's constant. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's bad. It's like, I like I start to twitch if it's like another sport. Like what? Are, like I can't. My mind doesn't compute anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like a football. What? What? This is the wrong football. Come on. Absolutely. Um, hey, so seriously, when, when do you guys report? When is your first official day? Yeah, so our, our guys, um, a lot of our first year guys are here doing uh, an orientation right now. And, and some of our guys that live off campus are certainly here and, and got back to campus. So um, they're here. We start officially on August 18th with our first session. So excited to get going with them and um, really have a, a pretty young group. We've got 10 first year players and and then one transfer. So uh, out of 31 guys, that makes up around a third of our our guys are new. So really excited to see where they're at in terms of the soccer and and obviously their fitness as well. And then um, just excited to see a a new team on the field this fall. All right, so I have to ask, because you brought it up, not me. Can you tell me what is your fitness test or do you have multiple tests or what's the big one? Let's be honest. What is the big one that everybody freaks out about? Yeah, so we do the beep test um, or the yo-yo intermittent spark test is the yeah. exact one that we utilize. Um, mm-hmm. And we ask a really high level of, of our guys on that, um, that test. Uh, each year, uh, we've kind of just upped the level of, of that. When I got here in 2018, the level was 18.5. And now we have it as a 20.0 on that test, which is quite a few more sprints for our, our guys to do in, in the preseason. But um, you know, our guys have been able to, to hit that standard. So we keep upping it. Um, mm-hmm. we will potentially run a mile. Um, our standard for that is five minutes flat, um, or some, somewhere around that. Um, to be honest with you, fitness is massive for us, but if a guy is five Oh five fit and not four fifty five fit, I'm a little less, uh, exact with that and, and more right. exact with soccer specific fitness. So if mm-hmm. they show to be fit on the field, then, then certainly, um, that's good enough for us, but yeah, our standards are 20.0 on the beep test and then uh, a five flat mile. Well, just so you know, I'll be coming into camp after those tests are done. <laughs> I, I'll, you, I'll just tell you, you can trust me. I'm, I'm, I'm fit. Um, yeah, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I walk up the stairs and I'm huffing and puffing. Um, so you're, you're going to do the, the fitness test, but what, 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 what do you envision or is it contingent upon those fitness tests Sort of what your first sessions are going to look like? Yeah, the, the first day for us is always playing intensive. So we let our guys really express themselves on the field and get out and enjoy the ball and enjoy it because the reality is I just know as a player you're so fired up in those first few sessions that to go out and do – a whole bunch of teaching is just not really uh, a way to go about it. So we, we really get out there and play a lot. And then um, after that, obviously, um, we've got to take into account, you know, the different topics that we need to hit to get ourselves ready for, one, our preseason scrimmages and friendlies, and then also, obviously, the season starting uh, September 2nd for us. So mm-hmm. we certainly plan everything out beforehand, but there's always going to be a level of having to be on your feet and, and move pieces around so that, um, you know, depending on, on where your guys are in terms of fitness or even in terms of um, tactical awareness. What? I mean, I got to have a, I, I guess you have a sense by now. Like, do, do you see, like, your freshman class contributing out of the gate? Or at yeah. least are you hoping that they are going? 
Yeah, uh, certainly. Um, we have a saying here, uh, and I stole this from Alex Ferguson, so I wouldn't take too much credit for this, but if you're good enough, you're old enough. And so, um, yeah, if, if the first years are, are good enough, then they'll play, and they'll play over yeah. fourth years or fifth years or, or whoever. So um, we really want the best players on the field. We think the 10 that we brought in as first years all have an opportunity to play. Um, how much playing time that is and how regularly that is is really dependent on how well they train. So um, I would say of the 10 that we brought in, I would see three to four being immediate, like contributing in some way in terms of, again, either 30 minutes or 40 minutes off the bench or actually starting games and, and really playing. So, um, again, who those three or four are, uh, you know, we think we have an idea. But then once you get in camp, sometimes that changes. Oh, and I'm and I'm sure, right? Like, I, this is the part where I don't think a lot of players realize your fitness doesn't necessarily your fit your results in your fitness test don't necessarily impact whether you're going to play. It's that fitness that allows you to do the soccer, and can you do the soccer part? That's gonna be the big impact i think sometimes guys forget that they spend too much time in the gym or running and they forget to kick a ball you know like sure just, sure and we i i honestly have seen it now both ways where guys come in and you're like man that guy's played uh, or done a heck of a lot of technical work he's so sharp yeah, and yeah. uh seems tactically switched on and then also guys where you're like oh my gosh like he is so fit. He just won the fitness test, but we went yeah. out and then started to play. And it's like, yeah. like you're saying, have, I don't know if this guy's touched the ball in a month and a half. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, you kind of have to have both. And, and like you're saying, I think the fitness allows you to express yourself on the ball yeah. and express yourself, um, in the soccer aspect of things. And for us, like, it's just a standard that you have to hit in terms of being able to do the things we need you to do on the field. And, uh, like anyone that's watched us play in the last five years, and, and this will remain the same in terms of like the effort level we ask of guys pressing and going to win balls back and um, even the effort level, like if we don't win it in the press to repress it yeah. and to counter press is, is really high. So if you aren't really fit, you just won't be able to do those things yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and that'll come out. So yeah, the, the fitness level is important, but like you're saying, if you haven't played, you still probably won't, won't find yourself on the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, you know, I've been on both ends, right? Like, hey, I'm super fit and I couldn't catch a ball. And then I've been able to do everything in goal, but then I wasn't really fit. So right. even after a week, I felt like I was a, you know, a two by four inflexible because I was so hurting. And I think that, sure. that's the other part, I think, too, is like you got to strike that balance that you can do what you need to do on the field. But that you're physically fit enough that, you know, within, you know, three days, your body is not revolting against you and saying, man, sure. I'm done. Yeah. Right. Yes. Which is a big, can be a big deal. Well, it is, especially at division three, well, soccer, right? Where you don't have so much time. You got to do everything. So within a short period of time before the season kicks off. Yeah. And, and coach, you bring up a good point. I mean, we, we're really lucky here. We have a full GPS system for every practice mm -hmm. and game, and we're super specific with that information. We look at it, our athletic trainers look at it. Uh, we have two full-time strength and conditioning coaches. They look at it. And then we also mm -hmm. send it uh, to a guy in Boulder, Colorado that does analysis for us on it. And mm -hmm. we're being super specific with it. Right. But the reality is, no matter how you structure the sessions, like preseason is a large load number. Like yeah, you're not yeah. going to be able to get around the fact that your scores in that week and a half to two weeks is going to be probably way higher than the rest of the season. So, yeah. um, you know, our guys have to be ready to do that. And, and like you're saying is even as exact as we can try and be like, we still have to get ready to, to play yeah. a game on yeah, September yeah. 2nd. And yeah, uh, like that we know the guys are tired. Um, I, I, there's a lot of coaches that don't use the GPS now and, and just go like, yeah, I know the data, like those guys are tired. We still want the numbers personally, but, yeah. um, yeah, like there is a, a portion of it where yeah, common sense is you're going to be tired and, and you still kind of have to deal with it. Do you, can, can I ask, do you, do you, do you, the GPS, the, the trackers, do you, you use them in every practice and 
and game? Do you use that? Do they use wear them in games so you can track yeah. their relative performance in a game versus a practice? Blah, blah, blah. You, you, yeah, you so, do that? yeah, we use them for we've actually used them um, or some sort of fitness tracking for every practice and game since 2018. So we used to mm -hmm. use uh, a heart rate system called first beat, uh, which is mm -hmm. uh, in my money, a better internal measure than even the mm -hmm. GPS data. Um, mm. but it fell off the guys. So to be honest with you, the only reason we, we switched <laughs> from the, the heart rate straps to the GPS was they have the bibs on and it's, oh, yeah. it doesn't fall yeah. out. Um, yeah. so if you chest the ball, you know, you're not, you know, picking up a heart rate strap when you should be tracking back on, on defense. So we switched to, to Titan, um, GPS. Mm -hmm. So now yeah, we have all those numbers and, mm -hmm. um, we've done a good job of logging all those numbers. So we can actually mm -hmm. go back and be as specific as like this exercise and training elicits this training effect. Um, mm -hmm. and it can, it's going to produce this amount of miles, this amount of sprints, right. obviously like each player is different and what they do in those sessions or what they do in the right. game is, is always going to be different. But, um, the biggest eye opening thing for us was really the players that, might not play a ton of minutes. So let's say you're a 15, 20 minute a game guy and then mm -hmm. our 70 minute a game guy gets hurt and now yeah. you're asked to play 70 minutes. Yeah. Uh, the amount of difference in like sprinting ability, uh, distance yeah. covered from 15 to 70 minutes is, yeah. is astronomical. So yeah. um, the biggest thing that we learned was like that we really did need to push those other guys on their off days to to be yeah. able to to really be able to do that in the games. So yeah, yeah. Um, we've certainly learned a lot and, and we like the GPS stuff. Um, obviously, it's a piece of the puzzle, but it's it's yeah. one that we take very serious. Can, can I ask this is just my nerdy side. Do you make decisions based off of that data? I mean, you might make decisions based on like, oh, maybe we should rest for a day. But do you make I'll just say roster decisions based on that too, or do you just track like during a game, you could see somebody's winded at the 60th minute. He's all red, <laughs> you know, hunched over time to get him off. Yeah. Sense? There's, there's always an eye test version of it, yeah. right? Where yeah. if you and me both looked out at a field, you could go like that player is tired. Like they're tired, showing yeah. all the signs of, of being tired and, um, but for us, the biggest things would be able we could show within the first 50 minutes of a game, this is the amount of actions that you did, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the amount of sprints, the amount sprints, of explosive yeah. activity that you had. And then the last 40 minutes of games, this is the amount of explosive activity that you have. And mm -hmm. for our guys that maybe aren't quite fit enough or are younger and, and need to take a step, there could be a huge drop off in that, right? Like it could mm -hmm. be literally half of what they normally yeah. do in the opening 50 minutes. So um, it's just good information for us to have. We haven't made any roster decisions mm -hmm. per se in terms of like actual GPS data, but we do use it as an information tool for our guys to take into their off season um, mm -hmm. or take with them uh, for their summer training to go like, yeah. this is what our starting center mid did every game the last year. Like if you mm -hmm. can't do this, in a game, like maybe you don't fit and yeah. obviously dis different systems, uh, ask for different stuff from the body and the same as, uh, different games. Like sometimes if we play a super tactical game or like we looked at, uh, our GPS data when the game, when, when we beat Messiah in 2019 and like, I bet uh -huh. you, uh, we didn't like actually cover that much distance cause we sat pretty deep and, and uh -huh. guys only had to cover 5, 10, 15 yards. So yeah. uh, it just depends on the game, too, what, what type yeah. of training effect it elicits. That, to me, is the really – now you start to get really interesting, right? Like, versus opponents. Like, what – and the result of those games, right? Like, yeah. how much did you exert? How much How much was the effort? Um, well, 100%. Win I mean, versus a loss. And then conference out of con – I mean, you could go, like, 50 million directions with that. Sure. And like we, the reality is, is we probably would need another full-time guy. I mean, we think yeah. we do a good job with it, but you'd probably need a guy Data that geek. just does that yeah. to, to do it as well as you could. But um, I can tell you that for our first beat data, we lost two games in 2018 and both of those games were the lowest workloads that our guys put in. And we were uh -huh. able to take a look at that. Now, yeah. was that what lost us the game? Maybe, maybe not, but yeah. it is, it is there as a, a fact you can pull up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could my but, but to me that it's it's 
that relative effort just sort of lets you scale things, right? Like, look at our best performance versus our worst performance. I'm sure there's data that says, man, when we were on all cylinders, this is what we looked like. When we just were not good for whatever the reasons are, this is what the this is what it looked like. And you can sure. do a, a data driven analysis based on that so that you, I guess, almost real time, you could say, hey, we're trending in this direction in this game. Is it, are we, you know, is it better or worse? But anyhow, sure. I could really but go. The, you, there's one other interesting thing, and this, this really was eye opening for us is we might look at a game and go, like, wow, that player is so fast. Like they're yeah. getting in behind their target for that gets in behind so many times. And then we might look at the GPS data and this has happened to us. And we've gone like, mm -hmm. he's actually not that fast. He's yeah. just really intelligent off the back shoulder. And yeah. uh, he's, his thinking is so fast that he looks faster than he is. And then we've had it the opposite way where I'm going like that player is not actually that quick. And then we look at the GPS high end data and it's like, he's actually very fast. <laughs> he's one of our yeah, fastest, yeah. Players, but yeah. his mind doesn't think quick enough to let him uh, yeah. utilize that ability. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's another, that, oh, that's a, that's you, you're, they, it probably does a really good job of testing your visual impressions of players. Absolutely. Sure. sure. Absolutely. Right. Like again, sort of your theory about, or how you've sort of framed a player they, you know, they don't work, they don't, w whatever those things are. And then you tell, like, because I watch you in practice, I don't think you put in the effort. And then you look at the data and you're like, oh, no, that's not, a, that's, that's not accurate, right? Yeah. Like, that's probably a great tool to have, right? Because I think, because that kid's probably like, I bust my tail every practice and you tell me I'm not working, right? Like, Absolutely. he is working, right? Yeah. So, um, all right. So. I mean, you're close, and so I'm just going to ask you, like, what expectations do you have for this fall? Yeah, um, I think I said this in our last interview, and we expect to try to compete to win the Liberty League each and every year, and our goal is to get into the NCAA tournament, and then once you do that, I think you give yourself the best opportunity, obviously, to make a run. Um, in terms of our immediate goals, we're just trying to get better each and every day. We're a young team. Um, a team that has a lot of talent. I think we're certainly talented enough to win the Liberty League and, and make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. But ultimately, we really just need to get better each and every day right now. And, and that's really our focus. Um, we've had a saying, we really had this, this one saying from 2018 through 2021 with a lot of successful seasons in there. And the saying was just 1-0 and on the day. We just want to win the day and, and go after it that way. And got after or got away from that really last year and, and thought about some bigger goals because we felt we had talent to, to do bigger things and um, it didn't help our guys. So we've really gone back to simplifying what we're about. So we're going to try and go one and zero on the day as many times as, as we can. And hopefully that leads to us having a really successful season. But um, we're certainly not um, afraid to say we want to compete to win the league and, and get to the NCAA tournament and make some noise. Yeah. I do. I'm looking at your schedule. I'm not going to comment about you playing the University of Paywall at University of Paywall um, in a scrimmage. That kind of bust, burst my bubble. But you are playing SUNY Cortland three days before you open with Bard at home. Yep. Did you do that on purpose? Uh. No, not exactly. Um, we we have to play Cortland every year. That's obviously the biggest rival, and and yeah. more than that, um, it's funny because uh, I'm close with with Steve, so yeah. we're very yeah. good friends, and uh, I think incredibly highly of him and his program. But great program. On great on that program. day, obviously, you know, we'd love to, to to beat him, but. Um, for the other, you know, days of the year, we, we love that program and, and certainly yeah. I support Steve. So, um, but yeah, we, we had to schedule the game. Certainly at this point, sometimes, um, you know, we're the same as we try to get great games early on in the year. Yeah. That game has, has kind of moved back from the first week or second week to later. Um, last yeah. year, we didn't play them until October. So uh, it just happened to fall. That was a day that we both could play it. And um, 
yeah, it, it is what it is, but it's always a, a dog fight. Yeah. I mean, I'll uh, be honest with you. I mean, that week beforehand, you go to Brockport, which was spectacular last year, and then Cortland, and then you open up with Bard at, at home. Yep. So, yeah. So you're, I mean, really, as you're looking at your, at your preseason, like, I mean, are you intentional? Are, are you intentional with the scheduling? Are you looking at teams more than just their, their win loss? Are you looking at teams that either bring you a game or something that you you might see later on during the season? In, in terms of playing, yeah, style, and, yeah. and and yeah. Uh, and yeah, in Rochester, yeah. So yeah. we we feel that Rochester, and obviously they've shown this as a program. You know, Chris does an incredible job, and they've been in the top twenty five almost every year that I've been here, and and really fought to get into NCAA tournaments and make runs, and so we feel like they're very like a Liberty League game. Like it's the same as us playing a St. Lawrence or a Hobart or, you know, an RPI. Now, obviously they play a little bit different. Each team tactically is a little bit different, but we think their players are are very good. So we want to play them um, to give ourselves a chance to, mm-hmm. to really showcase ourselves against another great team. And then the second scrimmage is certainly another one where like Alfred University has given us tough games in the past and they're gritty and, um, it's a game that we help hope to have a little bit more of the ball um, mm-hmm. than than them, but it's a game that again is is one that we hope gets us ready for the season. Um, yeah. And again, we try to play two different opponents, so I would never play a Rochester and then another UAA that is similar yeah. to them because yeah. we play different teams throughout the year. Yeah. So we want to try to, to play different, you know, teams in preseason. And mm-hmm. um, we're not a team that like plays every single player on our team and every preseason friendly. Like, I just don't mm-hmm. believe in that. Um, I want to give guys an actual run. So instead of playing you for five minutes against Rochester, we might play you for 30 minutes, you know, in the Alfred university game, or maybe you do get a half against Rochester, but um, when guys go in and out for five minutes or 10 minutes, you know, I, I just know as a player, I never got into rhythm and never yeah. was really able That's to unfair. showcase yourself. It's yeah. always, always been unfair to me. Like you don't give a guy five in a, especially in a scrimmage. I might get, I can, you can make the argument during this, during a regular game that sure, you need, sure. and then you're trying to energize, do something. But I think during a scrimmage and even you have two of them. Like, I don't think that's right to throw a kid in for five minutes. Like, you, the purpose of the scrimmage is to see, right? And to, right. Right. So, right. I'm, and, I'm and with you there. We're, we're lucky. Uh, you know, we, we play both as just a normal game. They're 90 minutes. We'll, I mean, we'll try to win the games. Um, yeah. So, ultimately, like, we want our guys to be ready. But we also, like you're saying, we've got to know. Right? We only get yeah. two games to know if you can do it. And if you can, great. If you can't, we also have to know that information. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, like the, I mean, in in work world, you know, the 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 best answer sometimes is no, meaning no, this isn't good fit. This is whatever that that no is. Sometimes that's the best thing for you because then you know, okay, now I know what I need to do, right? And and that to me, in player management, the best thing to do is to understand where they're at. And sure. If, if you're not ready for prime time, you want to be able to tell them, we just don't think you're ready. And these are the things you need to do. And I think that clarity sometimes gets obfuscated. Oh, that's a yeah. big word. Um, uh, between a coach and a player is that the coach is really quick to say, yeah, you're ready. And, but very slow to say the opposite side, like, look, you're not ready. We got to work on you. We've got to do these things. And, Right. And I think that's legit. Those are legit, com- brutal honesty. I think sometimes think that's that's a legitimate and a very important conversation to have. For sure. Um, all right. I know we talked about it earlier, but 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 maybe talk about these t- uh, ten players that you have coming in. I well, shout out to Colin Adams and his folks. You know, um, they've. Um, great little ball player that I know he's coming your way, but maybe you could talk about your, your 10 guys. Um, yeah, sure. I, I mean, I'll, I'll call a few of them out and, and it's really not in any particular order or that we feel like they're going to have the, the biggest impact, but obviously like you spoke about Colin, um, just a, a really technical attacking center midfielder that um, is ambitious enough in the final third to take chances and, and certainly isn't afraid of a, a trick or flick, which we, uh, mm-hmm. 
we appreciate. And then Ian Schultz uh, is also coming in, another PDA yeah. player that sure. yeah. you know is very two sided and and adds uh, another depth piece to our midfield. Um, we had Daniel Beatty. Um, Daniel comes to us uh, from Berkshire. Uh, he also uh, was actually set to go to Gonzaga. Um, decommitted himself really? in, in March. Yeah, he's a six-six center back from from the Revs um, that did a PG at at Berkshire um, uh-huh. and is now coming to us. So we're super excited about him. We think he's athletic and and gifted, and um, will certainly compete to play right away. And um, you know, I think Gonzaga liked him a lot, and and certainly didn't decommit him. He just decided. Um, that he wanted to, to give himself a real chance to, to compete and play, and, and he certainly will get that here. Um, we then add Leo Morris, who's a target forward from Loud and ECNL. Um, he's 6'2", good engine on him, um, good feet, really wants to play. Um, so we're, we're excited about him. Uh, along with that, we add uh, Liam Breslin, who's a PA Classics uh, MLS Next player, uh, a little bit oh sorry that's a personal <laughs> thing <laughs> like, yeah uh, he's he's a little bit smaller in stature but uh a, a good player and and certainly we have you know five others th- that we add but yeah. um those are just a few and um the reality is is we're excited about all of them we have a saying that we only bring guys in that we think can play and start right away like if we didn't think you could start for our program the reality is we wouldn't bring you into the, the fold. So yeah. if you're here, like you have every chance to, to play 90 minutes for us. Yeah. Well, that, that definitely probably builds like a competitive cauldron, right? Like that. And that's what you want, right? It's not a thing to shy away from. If you have enough, if you have everyone who could start. That's when it gets interesting, right? Like that's, for sure. It's really big deal. Um, What do you think, I've asked this too, like, what, what do you think your biggest challenge is going to be? Like, what, you, I mean, everything's rosy right now. Everybody I talk to, everybody I right. talk to, everything's rosy, right? Like, right. man, I, and I'm rosy too. Like, this is great. This is going to be new, so new much season, fun. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, brand new. It's, you know, look, it's all coming to, to into focus and we're going to start and, and then, you know, three weeks in, reality hits. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you're t- tired. What, so what do you sure. think the biggest obstacles are going to be for you? Uh, the biggest obstacles for us is for this group to learn how to win. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've had a large majority of players that for 18, 19, 21 really know, knew how to win. They did it a lot of times. And um, that got manufactured in 2018 through direct play and, and honestly mm-hmm. some lucky results. But then the guys kind of figured out how to do it in tight games and against great opponents. And mm-hmm. this group uh, in a year last year where we don't have a ton of wins needs to learn how to do that. So um, we're excited to show them how to do that and to build a culture that is is able to do that day in and day out. But the reality is I don't care how good of a ECNL player you are, MLS next player you are like, this is very different. Um, and it is, you know, I, I tell them all the time, even on the coaching staff side, like this is a lot of guys, full-time jobs to stop you from winning those games or to help you win those games. So, um, our guys have to learn how to do that We're we think we're talented enough to do it, but ultimately, like that will be the biggest hurdle for us. We'll be in every game. I'm, I think we can win every single game that's on our schedule. Like I wouldn't put teams on there if I didn't think we could beat them. Um, but ultimately, if we do on the day or not, like it'll be up to guys, you know, doing things in winning moments, blocking shots, uh, you know, putting their themselves on the line and, and, you know, putting their head in a spot that might hurt to, to score a header that wins you the game or or just being really, really big in, in good moments, being able to play out of tight spaces in big games. So all those moments, a lot of our guys haven't done yet. Um, mm-hmm. Part of that is awesome as a coach because you don't know what you don't know as a player, and sometimes right. those young guys can can really surprise you when they might not even know how much that moment meant when they do it. And, uh, and sometimes the other way, if they don't understand, like, we're not going to play a back heel inside the 18 in the 75th <laughs> minute against Hobart, right? So, you know, yeah. it, we've, we've seen look. it both ways. We've seen it both ways. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at your last year's schedule, right? And we talked about this. Like, 
I look at one one zeros and ties, right? Like that's that to me is those are the ones you turn. And if you do, you got nine games right there. Sure. Right. So it's yeah. not like you're far away. That's no. You know, like if you were getting blown out every game, right? Like it, it, you definitely could see the logic of saying like win every game. You you can't. You were that close. Like it just it just, scoreboard sometimes doesn't go your way, no matter how hard you try, right? For sure. Yeah. I I think from eighteen, nineteen, twenty one, and twenty two, we we played as many one goal games as anybody yeah. in the country, and for three years we won every single one of those, or at, yeah. at worst tied them, and then. Last year was the first year where you went, oh my gosh, we, we didn't, yeah. yeah, we didn't get a goal, or like yeah. we thought we should have gotten a pen, and then they get a pen, yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. happens. And so um, these games are so tight, and the parity in Division Three is incredible. Yes. Um, incredible. So we're we're excited about every game, but like the reality is that as much as we could win every game, like they're going to be tight games, obviously. Yeah. Well, you do need, like you said, I, not to say that that's how you won, but you had three years of the ball bouncing your way every time, yeah. And then you experience the one year, one year where it doesn't, it doesn't, right? And that's again those that those tight margins, right? That all you need is one bad bounce, and there you go. You just you're on the wrong end of the scoreboard, and I think that's absolutely very true, especially looking at your your schedule. I mean, I mean, I, I just because I'm a, like. I'm I'm sure even I was gonna say oh you go up to St Lawrence that's a that's a really tough yeah like I climb could, but now I they could, come into you like yeah oh okay a little different yeah like and and it's on it, honestly if you go back so if you look at um you know last year's start to the Liberty League mm -hmm. schedule so we're home against Clarkson where they were like 17th in the country when they came country, to us and yeah, tied yeah. tied zero zero in a game that. Yep we missed a breakaway with no one near the guy that got the breakaway, just like one on one half of a soccer field breakaway. And, uh, and then, so we tie that game zero zero. And then uh, we played Hobart to, to a tie as well. And then we go to St. Lawrence um, in a game that we score on ourselves in the 72nd minute uh, on a, a, a ball that's whipped in. That's to be fair, yeah. not even that dangerous. And we went to hit it and sliced it. And then yeah. all of a sudden, um, you know, you're, you're three games into a Liberty league schedule where you only have yeah. two points now, right. In yeah, three tight yeah. games. And, um, that, that is a tough place to be. So, yeah. uh, it, it's just one where these games are so tight and the league is, is fantastic. I think I said last yeah. time, I don't really feel the league gets maybe enough credit as, as it deserves, mm -hmm. because I think the, the top six, seven teams in the league are as good as any in the country. So, yeah, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's certainly very tight. Yeah. That um, the the momentum in conference is a big deal that I don't talk enough about. I always say like your first half of the season, you're you're out of conference schedule at the beginning of the season, really drives the momentum that you carry into. Like if you're six and zero, five and zero, whatever the number of games you play, going into conference, man, you are that's the ideal, right? Sure. Same thing works in conference. You start your first, like you said, first three games. If you're three and zero, you're like, okay, I'm feeling. We're feeling good. Things, you know, it's just the the motivation factor. You're just feeling everything's a lot easier, or not a lot easier, but it's easier. One hundred percent. Um, but then when you go where you don't have a win, you you lose one on an own goal, and you only have two points. That's the that same like oh my gosh this is gonna be hard you know like yeah, just the mentality yeah, you're digging yourself digging yourself out of a hole I yeah yeah and then it becomes every game becomes crucial and you're like anxious I mean I've experienced that as a player and a coach right one hundred percent and like there we always tell guys um, like we we've had years not not here but when I was at other programs where you know we started off the season by playing easy games and we mm -hmm. we don't do that here but we always said as a coaching staff, when I was at those schools, like those schools don't know they're not good yet. <laughs> like those, yeah. those, those teams, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're zero and zero, just like us. So yeah. when we play them, they're going to think they're just as good. And good. Yeah. we also had a preseason where they went like, Hey, like that yeah. target board is pretty good. And, and like, maybe yeah. we're going to be great this year. So yeah. um, there's always that piece to play too. Like teams are always going to be ambitious and, and want to play, 
um, their best soccer against an Ithaca College or against a St. Yeah. Lawrence or against a Liberty League team. So yeah. the out of conference is always very tough. And then, like you're saying, the league yeah. is if you get momentum, it's it's super fun. And if you don't, it's yeah. it's tough to get yourself out. It's, of. Just a, it's the nature of the beast, especially as quickly. I always say too, one of the big and I, again, it's not something I, I talk a lot about, but I, I think about, you know, the, the season, the way it's constructed isn't just bad from a physical standpoint right you're playing every third 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 day or whatever and you're going through jam-packed three games a week you're going at breakneck speed you know but you don't have time to like psychologically recoup so if you lost a game and it was tight or you made mistakes and whatever having two days to sort of flush out that negative thoughts and all that kind of stuff as silly as it is i don't think is enough time and you yeah. need to sort of build successes in in the interim before your next game so you're like okay i'm i'm okay i'm good i cleared that out and i think yeah. that's a lot of the why you see teams go like either they win 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 or they suddenly go go, go and then they just sort of think, because it's they haven't they're just sort of in this perpetual motion of negativity that they can't clear out 100 percent. i mean we played a, a very good uh stevens team here in 2021 they actually beat us mm-hmm. two nothing at home which was the first time we had lost at home in three years mm-hmm. um and they beat us at home and then i think they had a, a kind of up and down 2021 and then right. right at the end of the season they beat lycoming and they got really hot and they went on that run yeah. Uh, where they ended up losing to Tufts, and then last year you yep. see what they do, so yeah, you can yeah. see where where the momentum goes for for other yeah. programs as well. And obviously, that's a high end example of of yeah. them getting super hot. And obviously, hats off to the staff there; they do an incredible job. But a, a good example of of one if you do get yeah. yourself on a good track where you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, so. I'm going to ask you, do you have my equipment ready, my locker all set? Like, because I'll be there, like I said, in two weeks after all the phys- fitness stuff is done, I'll show up and I'll grace yeah, we'll, you with Yeah, my... we'll talk to our uh, equipment staff and we'll, we'll, have them, uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll have them lay out all your training tops and, well, and uh, full zip jackets and, and everything for you so you can you can get right into it. And yeah. Um, yeah. obviously, you know, we'll we'll see how, how you do on the GPS stuff and... Uh, <laughs> That that's different. That's it. I'm a yeah. goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Hey. Thank. I really do appreciate this. This was yep. this is a great conversation. I I love the preseason ones to sort of you know especially this close. Um. I mentioned to you I am. I am going to try to be at your game against RPI. Yep. Um, on the um, 28th of October. I also, I mean, it could be earlier, but I'll just say, like, I owe you n- another visit just because I never found your game field on my Fields of Dreams. So I feel like yeah. I owe you a second edition of Fields of Dreams. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, appreciate you coming out to the game, and and we'll have uh, we'll have the the staff there ready for you as you you come up just to get you up <laughs> yeah. to the game field. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, no, it, it looks signs, great right now. Like, go this way. Like, how? What is? bonehead move that was i walked all over that dang hill from the bottom of the where the entrance is i kind of sort of parked down at that low end yep and i think i was done i didn't care where you're talking yeah you know no more like like, like i'm done i can't i can't walk anymore so um all right coach i wish you i wish your men shout out to the pda boys um colin and ian i wish them the best um, I will be watching because you're not behind a paywall, so I really do appreciate that. <laughs> it makes life it makes life easy for me. But um, we will definitely be in touch. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for having me on. Yep. Thank you. You know, one of those tools and a great starting point is to check out Discover College Soccer Study Table. Now, I've interviewed Matt Baer, who's the founder of Discover College Soccer before. Really great guy. Um, and you've probably seen his podcast. I've referred to it and recommend anybody to go to check out his interviews. 
with coaches at all levels that is specifically designed to talk about the recruiting process and the different different college programs. He's not talking about him himself, he's letting the coaches speak. So with all of that information that he's gathered, you know, he's put together this study table um, that is a program to help you with the rec your recruiting process that's complete with video course on um, the recruiting process from start to finish. He, he has these uh, that are updated spreadsheets that are updated monthly, uh, you know, with contact information and details about every program in the country. That alone is worth its weight uh, in salt. He has a bunch of other resources, email templates, checklists to help you guide you through your own process. Now, you get the best part is whereas you can pay thousands of dollars to some of these recruiting services, you can get a lifetime subscription to the study table for less than one night in a tournament hotel. You know, the, the, the best part of, of it is that Matt has his own soccer experience. He's a former college player and college coach. He's talked to over 150 coaches in the, just the last year. And he, he, he has some great insights and has created something that I think is probably very, very useful to uh, a lot of you. And, and best of all, you get to save time and save money. Now, look. I don't recommend people that I don't know or I haven't come to know. You know, I've talked to, to Matt, as I mentioned, on, on a number of occasions, and he's probably has the most inf insightful and I'll just say thorough understandings of the recruiting process. Not because he's made it up, but because he's asked the uh, asked coaches across the, co the, the college game. And he's taken all of that figured out what the best recommendations from all of those discussions that he had and 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 put that together into uh, the study table so if you don't want to spend thousands on recruiting uh, on a recruiting service uh, and you have the mind to do it yourself the discover college soccer study table is for you so in the description, you can find a link um, that will get you 20% off on a lifetime subscription. Or if you go to discovercollegesoccer.com, click on the study table to register and use the discount code SIMPLE, um, you get to save 20% on your subscription. So with that, good luck.